our, our community table tonight is particularly well informed on this specific topic. Let me do some quick introductions back to the show. Nick Semenkovich, MD, PhD candidate. Thank you so much for being here. Nadia Martin, Masters in Health Policy. Thank you for being here. Chris LeBeau, welcome back, healthcare strategist. Um, I'm going to pick on Nick and then we'll see where the conversation goes from there. You're going to be a doctor someday, Nick. How badly? If I ever graduate. If you ever, you will, I'm <laughs> sure, unless you spend all your time saving the world. Uh, any interest in being a primary care physician? How appealing is that? For me, I think it would be difficult because I also like to do a lot of research and that um, tends to happen in large academic medical centers, places like WashU, where there are huge labs established. Uh, you know, a, a lot of your guests today talked about things that were kind of depressing and got me a little down. There are all these big problems. But I, I think that's uh, those those kind of problems open the door to such exciting solutions. And I think there are a lot of possibilities to attract uh, people like my classmates and myself into primary care. Uh, you know, one of the things that came to mind when your guests were talking is uh, actually in Kansas, they've done something really innovative. So uh, they realized they were running out of primary care physicians. So they actually established a medical school in Salina, Kansas, kind of smack dab in the middle of Kansas. And they started recruiting uh, students who grew up in rural Kansas to come and practice medicine there. And so they figured that if they train uh, rural physicians, people who go into family practice in the area where they're going to practice, they're likely to stay around. And I thought that was a really cool, innovative solution. Um, I think the other thing that excites me about primary care, <clears throat> as we hit a real technology boom in this country too, is that how can we use technology to empower people like nurses, technicians to do jobs that primary care doctors previously once did. There's a real territorial issue there, but the bottom line is, is that there are certain aspects and services a doctor can provide that in the end will be able to be delivered and enhanced through technology that other people previously could not have uh, done with, with, with such training. Yeah, I, I think that's one thing that's lost in this discussion. You know, a lot of times we think that the primary care physician is the person you go to right when you're sick, but it's also just the person you can ask any general question about your health care to, or you know, the person when you're a little worried about something you ask, and it's important just to be able to reach someone on the phone. You know, one of the things that's always a little depressing to me is when you see people that uh, wait in a, a clinic for just prescription refills. And so they've gone, you know, out of their day, they may have had to take some time off work, sit in a waiting room for an hour or two or more because everyone's busy, wait to see the physician, see the physician and say, I'm just out of this pill, I just needed a refill. You know, that's kind of a, a failure that I think could be solved in one sense by, by improved technology and, right. and access to different levels of care, where if you have something that's just simple and approachable problem like that, we can get that taken care of real quickly. And really improve health care in that sense. But I think also in that aspect that comes with education because a lot of people don't understand the background that physicians have. They think, you know, I'm sick or I have to go to the doctor and they go. They don't understand that if you have a prescription that there are other ways that you can, you know, get a phone call and handle that. But for students that are, you know, in med school right now, hearing all this negative um, communication about, you know, being overwhelmed by patients isn't really um, enticing to want to be a primary care physician, whereas maybe it could be redir redirected to, you know, now that access is going to be available, helping and giving back rather than, you know, I don't want to follow that path because I don't want to be overwhelmed as soon as I get out of school. Right. And, and let's be honest, nobody wants to go to the doctor. And part of the problem is, is that, you know, if you have a little bit of discomfort, this or that, immediately in your mind, it's, you know, don't, heaven forbid you look on a website like WebMD and suddenly you think you have something <laughs> way worse. Everyone right. has a but it's probably really yeah. the case. And Unless, of course, you read some of Lisa's work, then you will be exactly. highly informed earlier right. in the show. We absolutely. just want to make that perfectly clear. About yeah, no, absolutely. There, there's a great value of information out there, but it's trying to figure out what is relevant to me. And that's part of the problem is that patients, when they're feeling something, they're, cert they're uncertain, they're scared. And so the, the long-term question is, how can we use technology and other channels where a patient doesn't have to go wait in a doctor's office but can get some quick feedback on, you know what, my blood pressure may have just spiked a little bit. Maybe it's because I had too much caffeine or something like that as opposed to schedule an appointment a week out to find out that there's nothing really wrong other than I need to reduce my caffeine intake or something like that. So. I find, I find it interesting that a lot of the attention is that, you know, once the this is passed that doctor's offices are going to be overwhelmed with patients, but I, I don't think the, the fear behind going to the doctor is going to change just because access is available. There's a lot of people that are scared to go to the doctor, um, partly from the bill, but also out of fear that, you know, if I go to the doctor, I may actually find out that something is wrong with me. That fear isn't going to go away just because it's available. So I don't think that this rush is going to happen right away. I think that there will be some time to transition, and then hopefully people will learn that prevented by going to the doctor, you can prevent a lot of these, th these things instead of waiting until it's so severe. 
Yeah, that's certainly a big issue. I think preventive care is something that we really don't do a great job at in this country. You know, there are not enough people over the age of 50 who just take something like a baby aspirin once a day. You know, you can go to the grocery store and buy over the counter a little aspirin to take. And we know that that prevents a lot of things, not only things like heart disease, but can actually reduce the risks of cancer if you take it for a long period of time. Uh, and, and that's something that as a country we just don't do a, a great job of. I think that improved access to care, and it doesn't have to be from a physician. It could be from a nurse practitioner. Right, it could be from a health educator. It could be anyone in the public health outreach realm. Any of those people can help contribute. It could be from technology. You know, people sure. watch tutorial videos online and learn how to take better care of themselves and uh, approach sort of preventive care, stop the problems before they really need to see a physician. But in the long run, this is, you know, one of the bigger Affordable Care Act issues, too, where our, our health care system is set up to where when you go through the ringer, that's when the doctor gets paid or when you show up at the hospital. That is when they, they, they're paid as opposed to paying, getting paid to keep you out of the primary That's care. That's how you get too office. many electrical outlets and too many faucets. <laughs> That's and it. Many, and too many cabinets. I knew yeah. that would work because I lifted it from someone else. All right, thank you all.